Yeah, they always say that things aren't lost, they just need to be found. We've got something like thin squash, two, two sunflowers, four, maybe five varieties of corn, and everything else is beans. Mm. Lots of beans. Yep. I do a lecture with, with students, and I say, you know, like if I'm holding a seed in my hand, right, and I ask the students, what do you see? Sometimes they'll say life, they'll say food, they'll, they'll say a seed, and I, and I say, yes, all those things are true. But when Abenaki hold these seeds, at some point, the Creator gave it to one of our people to be able to sustain themselves. So if any one of those ancestors would have thrown that seed away, we wouldn't be able to hold that in our hands because it would be lost forever. So when we see a seed, not only are we touching the gift from the Creator that gave us to us, but we're also touching the, the hands of the thousands of ancestors who took care of it. So I asked the students, what would you do with this seed? Would you throw it away and it'd be lost forever? Or would you plant it or hand it to somebody who would plant it? Pick some more, you can do it yourself. So we're excited about the squash here too. I've never had it before, but this big kind of ugly squash is called East Montpelier. You know, people say, well, do the Abenakis have any culture left? And in all of my work, I can say I know exactly where this came from. And as a professional ethnobotanist, if I can show that these things are indigenous to here, um, it shows the Abenakis have been here, they're still here, and they've been here right straight on through, which is an incredible statement of sovereignty and persistence. So it's that connection to the source, to the creator, and to our ancestors who took care of it. So that's what the seeds really mean to us. And it's a beautiful thing. That's the green corn song.